In the year 2103 in the eastern United States, Maya visits her brother Griffin, who resides in a trailer just outside their home. Griffin excitedly tells her about an upcoming VR competition that could win them enough money for their mother's medicine. He hands Maya the VR headset, asking her to help him win a crucial level in the game. Taking control of Griffin's avatar, Maya leads the party to victory with a strategic move, quickly progressing to the next level. During the game, Maya discovers a map on an opponent's body, which turns out to be the key the party needed. After the game, Maya heads to her job at a 3D print shop. Griffin's friends drop off a package containing a new headset from a Colombian company, Milagros Calderon, which is offered for free. However, Maya needs to scan her eyes, equivalent to a signature, to confirm receipt of the package. At home, Griffin reveals that he was selected to beta test the new headset because he reached level 100 in another game, not realizing that Maya had actually achieved this milestone for him. Seeing the potential financial reward, Maya agrees to participate in the beta test. Griffin helps Maya put on the new headset, and as she opens her eyes, she finds herself immersed in the virtual world as Griffin's avatar riding a motorbike. The experience is exhilarating and surreal, offering a glimpse into a new and exciting virtual reality. As Maya explores the city, she's astounded by the realism of the virtual experience, especially the sensation of touch, however. Her awe is interrupted by a computer voice warning her that she'll also feel pain in the game. To progress, Maya must comply with the voice's instructions. It guides her to Buckingham Palace, where her motorbike vanishes upon arrival. She utters a code phrase, gaining entry to the palace, where she performs various tasks to test the game's capabilities. In another room, Maya demonstrates her skills, showcasing her agility and prowess. She then moves to the garden, where the research institute is, hosting a party. The voice instructs her to flirt with a woman named Felix and persuade her to take Maya's avatar home. Felix is charmed by Maya's conversation, and they leave in... Felix's car sharing a romantic moment as they drive. However, the voice directs Maya to covertly retrieve a vial from Felix's pocket and open it under her nose. The contents of the vial cause Felix to pass out, triggering an attack from the robot driver. Maya engages in a fierce struggle, using her combat skills to fight back and ultimately killing the driver in self-defense. With the car stopped in a secluded alley, Maya awaits further. Instructions from the mysterious voice. When Maya utters the code phrase, I've arrived, the wall opens, revealing Rhea, the mysterious voice's source. After a brief enigmatic exchange, Rhea announces that their interaction will continue the next day, prompting Maya to disconnect from the game. Griffin informs her that the company is pleased with her performance and offers her more money, to which Maya agrees despite feeling slightly dizzy upon standing up. Later, Maya heads to a bar to purchase medicine for her mother from dealers. Afterward, Maya goes to a bar to buy her mom's medicine from dealers. The guys say she doesn't have enough for even one pill and imply she should offer naughty services, only to be interrupted by Declan, a disabled man who attaches his monowheel to a small vehicle. Declan threatens the dealers until they agree to sell Maya the uh, medicine. Then he and Maya leave while the guys go back into the bar. The boss, Renner, scolds them for being afraid of a disabled man and smashes a guy's head on the table as punishment. Sometime later, Maya connects to the game again. The Avatar wakes up in a surgery room, unable to move. Alita tells her that Maya can't leave Sim without her permission. Before the surgeons begin removing the Avatar's eyeball to replace it with Felix, Maya can feel the pain, but Alita guides her through it until she falls asleep. Later, the Avatar wakes up in a car with Rhea and they go to a fancy building where they use Felix's eye to open the door. They get in an elevator that takes them through a bunch of curious floors, including one with a whale. Eventually, they reach a chamber with an inverted pyramid hanging from the ceiling. Alita makes Maya put her own eye on the pyramid and when the Avatar jerks back in pain, Alita forces her to keep the head there so the laser can finish its job. Suddenly, Simon shows up and Alita tells Maya to stop him, because he's there to kill them. However, Simon immediately overpowers Maya and ties her up. 
before using a gun that shoots sonic punches to knock down Alita. While Simon starts hurting Alita to make her give up information, Maya manages to get a handout only to discover the skin has peeled off and there's a robot underneath. Simon lets go of Rhea to shoot again and Maya sends the uh, Avatar to fight him, giving Alita time to run away. Putting his attention on her allows Simon to shoot the Avatar in. The head and Maya wakes up in the real world, saying she never wants to play again as she throws up. Out of town, a policeman notices two suspicious cars and follows them, but they suddenly disappear. When the cop comes out to investigate, a man pulls a gun on him and tells him to stand in the middle of the road. Then an invisible car knocks the cop down. It turns both cars, have advanced cloaking. The next day at work, Maya gets a call from Nolan who tries to warn her about some impending danger and advises her to play again, but Maya just hangs up. In the evening, Maya is closing the shop when the lights flicker and will voice is heard through all the machines around her. He claims her life is in danger and there is a bounty of $9,000 on her head, but he can't help her unless she signs in. Terrified, Maya runs to find Griffin, who is hanging out with his friends. When they check the area with their drone, they see a group of armed people coming towards them. Maya rushes to hide her blind mother, Lila, in the basement, while Griffin friends hack into the assassin's drone to make it look like the boys are still sitting around the fire. Then Griffin and his friends link their body implants to their drone, gaining the ability to see its visual feed. After grabbing their guns, the group sneak into the woods and begins taking the men down one by one pretty easily. Thanks to their hack, the enemy tries to shoot back, but they can't do anything against the guy's implants that allow them to find them in the dark. Meanwhile, in the house, the power goes out and a man comes. After Maya, who activates the Roomba to distract the guy and hit him from behind, the man immediately turns around and tries to shoot her, but he's killed first by Griffin, who shoots through the window. Thinking it's over, the group checks the drone camera and discovers the enemy has hacked them back so they could secretly bring over a backup team. Another gunfight ensues and Griffin group is starting to run. Low on ammo, but at that moment, Declan arrives and helps them out. Once every enemy is dead, the group agrees that Maya must use the headset again to gather information. She logs in and wakes up in a body that looks exactly like her. Then Wolf approaches her and explains this isn't a game. The headset sends her mind to a robot called Peripheral in the year 2099. When she leaves the building, she's shocked to see giant statues decorating London, but almost no people around. Wills also shows her a newspaper with Elis obituary four weeks. From that day in Maya timeline, the deal Nolan offers a simple. If Maya helps him find Rhea, then he'll pay for the medicine to save her mother. After Wolf disconnects her, Maya appears in the present, feeling dizzy again, but she still rushes into town to pick up the medicine where Wolf left it. Then she gives Lila the medicine, while Griffin friends bury all the bodies. Next, she logs in again and wakes up in a house in Nottingham, Hill where Nolan introduces her to his boss Lev and his technicians. Maya learns that whenever they come in contact with the past, the past branches off to create a parallel timeline known as a stub and the contact becomes the point of separation. Aleta was providing them with a connection to the stub, which they'll lose if they don't find her soon. Maya is upset to hear the medicine only has a 57% rate of success, so she announces that she'll only help them find Rhea after. They help her family for real. Meanwhile, Officer Miles stops by the road when he sees a cup of coffee floating in midair. He pokes around and eventually realizes there's a car with some sort of cloaking device. After lots of touching, he makes the car visible and finds a bullet, which he bags up and takes to Griffin because Miles knows about his expertise. Griffin identifies the type of bullet but claims to know nothing. Moments later, Maya comes back and tells Griffin that people from the future are going to send them two fifty thousand dollars by making their cousin Asher win the lottery. Afterwards, Maya tries to search the internet for references to Maladros Calderon or Nolan, but comes up empty. While doing so, her hand gets stuck on the computer mouse, and she's unable to move it, so she has to use her other hand to pry it off. Later in the middle of the night, Maya wakes up when she hears a strange noise. She goes downstairs and discovers it's Lila who announces her eyesight is coming back. Meanwhile, Renna is using a VR set to hire virtual women only to suddenly be interrupted by Simon who offers him 
$10,000 to get rid of Maya and Griffin. Renner thinks it's a joke and leaves the game. Later, while Renner is with a real woman, he gets a message, saying that he has received two and a half one thousand thousand dollars in his bank account. Now knowing the offer was real, he agrees to kill Maya and her family. The next day, Maya goes to work and finds Griffin and his friends printing more weapons. It turns out Griffin has used the lottery money to buy the shop. Afterward, Maya logs in to visit the future. She tells Lev's group everything that happened with Rhea, and they explain that Felix was an assistant security manager at the R.I. They also tell her that Renner has been hired to harm them. So, Maya asks to be sent back to the present to warn her brother. In the meantime, Wolf parks outside childhood home and remembers the day he and Rhea were adopted. When he finally goes inside, he hears Rhea singing, but it's only a robot with her face and voice. Then he meets his mother, who tells him she last saw Aleta A.A. a month ago in St. James. Aleta had said that she was staying where snow last fell in London. In the present, Griffin meets Renner and reveals he knows about his mission. He offers Renner two choices, one of which is $200,000 every week to leave them alone. When Renner asks about the other, Griffin explains he and his friends are former Marines who are all connected as one big organism thanks to their military implants. If Renner tries anything, he'll learn how deadly they can be. Renner isn't scared because he's killed many criminals in the past just to control his town, so Griffin points at the glass in Renner's hand and a bullet immediately shatters it. Finally, taking it seriously, Renner shakes hands with Griffin to accept the money deal, unaware that Miles is watching nearby. Later, Maya logs in again and appears in a car with Wolf. They drive around Buckingham Palace trying to retrace Maya. Steps from that night. They decide to walk around and Wolf flanks them up so they have access to each other's sensory experience, which can be controlled by moving their fingers. Now Maya can see and hear everything Wolf can, including his hangover. Soon, a police robot begins following. Maya and Body isn't properly registered. Nolan tells the cop that Maya Robot is being used by a woman from Canada who is desperate to see her long-distance lover. Then he kisses Maya to prove the story. The cop believes it, but makes Maya log out. Meanwhile, Simon Boss and head of the R.I. Harper invites company's researcher Evelyn to her garden, where she keeps tons of bees. While they share some tea, Harper asks about Rhea and Evelyn, admits she told her about the stub research depart then. Harper reveals there was a chemical in the tea that makes her sweat mimic a pheromone released by hornets and opens the doctor so the bees can attack Evelyn punishment. The next time Maya logs in, Nolan tells her about the clue he's obtained. Maya thinks Snow could be a person, and Nolan realizes it was one of Alida's heroes. They visit the place where the celebrity died and Maya opens the wall like Rhea taught her, allowing them to find Rhea apartment. The place is a complete mess, meaning someone got there before them. Then Maya notices a broken clock that looks exactly like the one in her house, so she moves the hands to make the times match. A secret door opens and they find the surgery room where Maya had her eye replaced. There are two broken-down robots plus a white model of her own house and its surrounding area, including figurines of her brother and friends. After taking a sample from the robots, we'll find Arita's implant in a box which she got removed so she couldn't be traced. When they're about to leave, the main door suddenly blasts open. Soon, Simon and a robot attack them, and Simon's sonic gun seems to affect Maya real body too. Wolf uses a fallen scalpel to attack the robot and knock it down which distracts Simon and allows Maya to disarm him. Unaware that Harper is seeing everything through the robot's eyes, Maya begins shooting Simon to make him talk in the explained Harper is after her because she took something. Before he can say anything more, Harper makes the robot kill Simon. In return, Maya destroys the robot with a gun, then a flashback. Reveals that in 2075, London is absolutely destroyed and Nolan and Rhea are kids living on the streets. One day, they see a van distributing food, so Wolf goes to investigate while ignoring Rhea warnings. When he comes closer, the van starts looking blurry, so he throws a stone and discovers the whole thing is just a visual projection. Suddenly, two people in yellow suits and masks chase after, Wolf and Rhea quickly capturing them both. Back in 2999, Wolf takes the samples in the implant to Levy, who points out that Rhea won't survive long without it. Maya returns to her time and notices blood in her eye. Suddenly, her right hand spasms again, and when she looks back up, the blood is gone. Later, 
Maya and Griffin argue over how they're handling the situation, and as Maya gets more agitated, a bruise grows over her left eye and she suddenly falls into a seizure. Griffin takes her to see a doctor who says Maya had a ton of chronic seizure, but there don't seem to be any after effects. She still wants to run some more scans and advises Maya to stay away from the headset. They return home. Griffin tells his friends he wants to log in and put those people back in line to ensure they don't hurt Maya. Declan seems interested in the idea of being able to control a body. In the future, Harper says her people make a robot in the image of Simon so he can share information about Wilf and Lev. Moments later, Harper shows up at Lev's house and accuses him of stealing something. When Lev plays ignorant, Celine talks about the structure of their world and its three major forces. The clipped oligarchy that Lev belongs to, the Met Police, and the Research Institute. Harper reminds Lev that each group shouldn't overstep its bounds and points out the last guy that tried metatraffic fade. She threatens Lev with the same fate, and after she leaves, Lev notices his teacup is gone. At that moment, Declan logs into the Maya robot and tries to run away by jumping through a window, but a technician immediately cancels the connection. Meanwhile, Maya is watching childhood home movies on a normal headset when Wolf appears to tell her what Declan did. Then, Maya reveals she looked into love and found the name in her timeline connected to a, a related man whose entire family was brutally killed, but Will says there is no connection. Afterwards, Wolf tells Lev what Maya found out about his family. Lev isn't surprised and explains that he hired Rhea because he wanted a stub of his own so it could be used for many goals like testing new medicine. Lev reveals that he was troubled by the idea of other versions of himself, so he had his family killed in the other stubs. Back to Maya, her hand continues to spasm but decides to log in again anyway. She tries to go exploring, and when the technicians try to disconnect her, Griffin friends hack into the headset to stop them. Maya wants bodies for Griffin and Declan too, and demands to know why there are such fewer people in the future. After both teams cause Maya to connect and disconnect a few times, Maya managed to stay in the future and convince the technicians to cooperate. Moments later, Maya meets Nolan at a graveyard where she sees mysterious objects floating over some of the graves. Wolf explains the objects show the different phases of something called the jackpot, which was a funny name given to the apocalypse. The first one opens to show a complete electrical blackout in 2039 that started in the USA and soon spread worldwide. The second object shows a pandemic called the Blood Plague, and the third shows a total environmental catastrophe in which 7,000, 1,000 people died over four decades. The fourth one is called The End, and it shows a domestic terror, attack in which a nuclear missile silo was blown up. The visual illusion of the explosion is too much for Maya to handle, and she asks it to stop, so she sent back to the present. A flashback then shows how Ileda convinces Evelyn to share research by appealing to their former relationship. Evelyn takes Rhea to the room with a pyramid calling it the God Font. Here they have access to stubs, used for their research in various fields. One of their studies belongs to the Behavioral Modi Department, in which they set up a shell company in the stub that made a deal with the military giving them implants for their soldiers. Those implants were then tweaked to affect the brain's compassion center. For example, they caused soldiers to shoot random wounded animals by making them see as the enemy. Only one soldier tries to help an injured dog and gets blown up in the process. Alita is disgusted by human experimentation without consent, but Evelyn doesn't seem to mind. On their way out, they're seen by Felix. In the present, former assassin Elias is trying to live a normal life under a new identity until he receives a package with a phone and a sonic gun inside. He tests the gun and is shocked by its power. At that moment, he gets a call from the Simon robot, who offers $10,000 to kill Maya family. Elias tries to decline, but Simon forces him to accept when he threatens his daughter. Later, a bowling alley, Elias goes to see an old friend, accusing him of revealing his identity to Simon. The guy explains he was threatened until he gave up the information, but a furious Elias still shoots him and all his sons to death. Then Elias gets in his car, and Simon sends him the information. To find Maya, suddenly, a surviving son comes out and opens fire on Simon who immediately rushes out of the car to hide under it. He shoots the guy a couple of times with a sonic gun, and then 
runs him over with his car. In the morning, Maya gets more tests done, and the doctor tells her some bacteria is affecting the part of her brain related to seeing. Then she uses a spinal tap to take some fluid from Maya body to study it further. Meanwhile, Elias stops his car by the road and pretends it isn't, working as he waits for Maya to leave the clinic. However, Maya friend Billy finds him first and in on helping. Even when Elias says no, at that moment, Griffin and Maya pass by in their car and stop when they see Billy offering their help as well. Elias grabs the sonic gun and Maya recognizes it, so she makes Griffin duck right before they get shot. Then Elias tries to shoot Maya, so Griffin speeds up to escape and ends up crashing nearby. As Elias comes closer with open fire, Griffin comes out and shoots back while Maya makes the car go back to get Elias out of the way. Elias is soon ready to shoot again. However, Billy has her own weapon and brings him down first, overpowering him but not killing him because he's wearing a bulletproof vest. Minutes later, Miles arrives in arrest Elias. He also asks Maya about the sonic gun, but she pretends to know nothing. On the way to the police station, Elias tells Miles about the deal. He was offered and explains that those who hired him will want to cut loose ends, so he offers the money to Miles to let him escape. Before Miles can respond, an invisible force hits the car, making it roll over. Another car becomes visible nearby, and the driver drags Elias away. By the time Miles comes out, the mystery person is gone. Later, Maya logs in and goes to see Harper at the RI. Maya asks why Harper is after her, and Harper says she stole something, but Maya swears she doesn't have anything. When Maya threatens to kill her, Sharice reveals she's also using a robot body and attacks first. A fight ensues, and both robots show remarkable strength, but Maya still manages to overpower Harper and break her neck before leaving. Another flashback shows Griffin and his team in the Texas, out back in 2028. While on duty, they discover a dog stuck in a wired fence, howling for help. They discuss whether or not to help it, and Griffin reminds the others of the intel about the enemy using injured animals. The team isn't convinced, and Declan runs out to help the dog anyway. As he cuts the wires, he sees that the dog is armed with a bomb which blows up and takes most of his limbs. At that moment, Declan wakes up in the present, screaming at the memory haunting his dreams. Meanwhile, Miles tries to keep investigating the accident, but finds the digital files blocked. Then the sheriff tells him to take paid leave and get some rest. After the sheriff leaves, Miles sees in a bathroom stall a pair of shoes that look like the ones he saw at the site of the accident. This makes him realize the sheriff is dirty and getting Miles out of the way on purpose. In the future, Nolan and Maya are on a busy street and Maya wonders why the people seem to stay away from them. So Nolan explains it's just a visual illusion created by the RRI to make the city look less bleak. Maya moves her fingers the way Nolan shows her, and all the people disappear, so she tries it on the landscape next. Hands of buildings disappear, and the remaining ones look destroyed. Afterward, Nolan and Maya go to meet the fabricators behind. Our leader's robots, whose location Nolan discovered, thanks to the samples he took the other day. They enter a butcher's shop and say the code word, but the butchers refuse to offer their real services. Then Maya makes up a story about how she bet her bodies, make her that she could find a better fabricator, causing the butcher to rise to the challenge. He inspects Maya Robot and says he can do it, offering her retractable titanium nails. Maya then asks about replacing a robot eye with a human eye, which causes the butchers to attack. For an advanced body like Maya, it's no trouble to fight them at. The same time, and with just a few movements, she knocks them both down. One of the butchers still tries to attack again, but Maya overpowers her again, and the other butcher tells her to surrender. Next, Will shows them a picture of Rhea and asks about her. So the guy says she had been working with a group of revolutionaries called the Neo Press. Nolan is shocked that his sister could hide that from him. In the meantime, Left technicians build robots for Declan and Griffin to come to the future too. In the present, Renner and his wife are setting up dinner while an unconscious Elias sits across the table. When he wakes up, he discovers he has a metal collar around his neck. He immediately tries to attack Renner, but the wife uses a remote to give him an electric shock through the collar. Later that night, Asher learns that Declan has been suffering from nightmares and offers to share his pain. Using the implants, they connect to each other, and Asher sees Declan memories of how he lost his limbs. The experience leaves him shaking on the floor from the pain, 
but at least now Declan is peacefully asleep. In the future, the technicians realize that Maya Doctor is researching the bacteria she found in her body. At that moment, they get a visit from Inspector Dr. Morgan, who is investigating Simon's death. Lev can't call his solicitors because the phones are down, so they're forced to invite her in. Dr. Morgan explains she can just arrest Will for his presence at Simon murder site and execute him in the next seven minutes. But instead, they can just answer her questions. Back to the present, the sheriff shows Renner the video from Miles' car. Meanwhile, in Renner house, Elias steals a heavy paperweight while the wife is looking away. Then he pretends to be interested in Renner fish tank and comes closer to smash it with the paperweight, causing water to flood the room and make the wife fall to the floor. Furious, she uses the remote to electrocute him, but he grabs her leg and the water conducts the electricity to make them both pass out at the same time. A few seconds later, Elias' eyes open some time later, Declan, and the siblings get a message from the future asking them to log in. When they wake up, they find Dr. Morgan waiting for them. Lev has told her about the connection to the past, so she wants to take them to the station for some tests. Eventually, they make it to a Met Police training facility called the Zoo. With a flick of Dr. Morgan's hand, the debris in front of them turns into a tall building and Dr. Morgan sends Griffin and Declan inside so they can test their new bodies. Dr. Morgan assistant Elise explains the rules. They must advance from floor to floor while getting rid of all obstacles until they reach the roof where a surprise awaits. The lights go out and six robot guards appear around them. The guys work together like the old times and quickly bring the guards down while Elise analyzes their data. Once they're done, she announces each floor will have more and more enemies. However, the guys keep advancing through the floors with no problems beating up any enemy that gets in their way. When they make it to the roof, Elise informs them the three of them must fight until there's only one left standing. Griffin and Declan immediately attack, but not even their teamwork is enough to defeat Elise. Only needs a few moves to force them to disconnect. Outside, Dr. Morgan tells Maya she's investigated her family in this timeline and shares the result. The local version of Declan didn't lose his limbs, and none of the team members had the implants, so Griffin didn't survive the war. All this means that the R.I. opened the stub at least a decade before they've been assuming. The jackpot seems accelerated in Maya timeline, and Dr. Morgan suspects the R.I. When their conversation is over, Dr. Morgan disconnects Maya. In the present, Miles returns to the station and asks to see the evidence he brought from the accident, but the only thing on the list is his wrecked car. Suspicious, Miles tracks down his car in a junkyard and finds all the other evidence inside, like the sonic gun. When he presses the button, he accidentally shoots the windows off. At that moment, he gets a call from the sheriff telling him to go to Renner Place. When Miles arrives, he follows bloody footprints to find the wife's body and the sheriff talking to Renner. The sheriff knows Elias did this, but he wants Miles to arrest Griffin and his team as the culprits. Miles refuses, so the sheriff tells him to wake up to the reality of the corruption in the force and to do as he says. Otherwise, he'll get fired or even arrested. Miles returns to his car, and while thinking over what to do, he remembers the guns and takes them back to the house. The sheriff tries to make him see reason, but Miles shoots him a bunch of times to kill him. Then he hits Renner with a sonic gun to throw him out the window. Meanwhile, Lila is suddenly blind again and asks for help, so Griffin friend Sloan takes her to the clinic. Nearby, Elias watches them and starts following them. Later at the clinic, the doctor checks on Lila while Sloan waits at the reception. Elias comes in with a bleeding arm, and when Sloan tries to help him, Elias stabs him a few times, Sloan starts defending. Himself in a fight ensues, but no matter how many times Elias stabs, Sloan keeps going. Eventually, Elias manages to keep him in a hold and choke him until Sloan dies. When the doctor and Lila to check on the noise, Elias threatens them with a gun to keep them as hostages. Then he takes Sloan's phone and unlocks it with his dead face to send a message. When Declan and the siblings return to the present, they get a message from Sloan's phone saying he's at the clinic with Lila. Griffin, Maya, and Asher immediately get in the car, and on the way to the clinic, they start getting suspicious of the messages, because they use words Sloan wouldn't use. Asher tries to connect with Sloan through their implants, but he can't find Sloan vital, so they guess a killer is there. Once they're close enough to the clinic, Asher connects to Sloan's body and makes a twitch. When Elias stands up to shoot Sloan again, the team sees a 
move with thermal binoculars, and Griffin immediately shoots him down. Then they rush inside to save the women, and Griffin shoots. Elias again, just in case. In the future, Lev's technicians discuss how to access the bacteria and Maya brain to steal it. When LEV comes by, they use an encrypted language to keep discussing a possible plan, but LEV knows that language and threatens to kill them if they don't share what they know. They explain that I lead a plan to download the stolen RI files into Griffin implants to hide them in the past so they'd be untraceable. But since Maya posed as him, the headset transformed the data into bacteria that began to colonize her brain. The technicians plan to give the data to the Neoprim so they can burn this world down and build a new one. But Lev cuts the guy's cheek and orders them not to betray him again if they don't want deadly consequences. The next time Maya Griffin and Declan log in, Dr. Morgan offers them a deal. She can give them resources to prevent the jackpot in their timeline, and in return, they must work for her. Maya says she also wants a cure for her mother, but Dr. Morgan informs her that nothing can be for Lila anymore, and she'll die in 23 days. Upset, the siblings immediately disconnect and comfort each other. In the meantime, Harper meets with one of the technicians, who tells her that the R.I.'s data is in Maya head and wants Harper to stop left from getting it. Sherry says she'll accelerate the jackpot in Maya timeline to get rid of her and her family. Later, Maya logs in to meet with Nolan, who wants to tell her something but worries Dr. Morgan may be spying on them. They link up their minds, and as they say each other's names, they realize they love each other. Then they decide to visit the place where Nolan used to hide, with Rhea when they were kids, unaware that the technicians are spying on them. When they make it to the spot, they make the extra people disappear and find a younger, I lead a robot waiting for them. She tells Maya to go away because a robot can be used by others. And once Maya disconnects, the technicians lose contact. Then the real I leader shows up to explain to Nolan that the immunity and plan every citizen has in a, their heads is used to suppress memories. When Rhea removed hers, she remembered everything. While younger Rhea digs out a skull from the ground, adult. Rhea says that the oligarchy killed 5,000,000 people in under. Fortnite, because of the fear of spreading contagion, including Wilson, Rhea families. At that moment, a bunch of people show up, and Rhea reveals she's been gathering survivors to form the Neo Prims. Now all they need is the data in Maya head. In the present, Miles tells Maya about a warning from Homeland Security about an attack on a nearby missile silo. Recognizing the beginning of the jackpot, Maya logs in and meets with a technician, forcing her to confess everything. Determined to stop the plan, Maya asks Declan to log in too, so he can help her open a new stuff and cause a reboot, meaning Maya is planning to self-delete so the enemy won't have a reason to accelerate the jackpot. Afterwards, Maya meets Dr. Morgan, who can't open a new stub, but tells her how to do it at one of the RI's ancillary sites. When Maya gets there, a guard immediately tries to stop her, but Maya quickly overpowers him and uses his eye to open the door. Inside the building, she finds a pocket watch, and when she grabs it, Harper gets a notification, so she opens the wall to release more guards. Maya quickly fights them all and defeats them in just a few minutes with the help of the room's furniture. Then she puts the watch on a special panel and activates the stub portal. After telling Harper she'll never find her, Maya crushes the watch. Soon, Maya wakes up in the present and goes for a walk to the creek. Declan is hiding in the bushes with a sniper rifle, and after Maya counts back from ten, a gunshot echoes through the air. Seconds later, Maya makes up in her robot in the future, and Dr. Morgan asks if they should get to work. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.